Hey everyone, this is George Carlos, and welcome back to another episode of Mindset Monday. Hey everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day where you are. And this is season two, episode eight of Mindset Monday. And I'm going to talk about something, I'm going to wrestle with it in my mind. I got some notes written down, I'm looking at uh, on my computer right now, and just some things, that I, and I, I kind of like doing this I've always done this with writing where I try to actually kind of write um to learn not necessarily write to share my learning I'm gonna try this with podcasting and I've you know kind of like struggling with some of this stuff and I think what I want to talk about today is this idea and you probably hear about this quite a bit is about like dealing with the naysayers right and I'm going to talk just a bit about that but I think that's kind of like an overdone thing right like you know um we just hear about that all the time but I also want people to think about like how do we actually deal with um praise from strangers and how do we look at that too right because i think it's sometimes like oh just dismiss dismiss like those people don't know you you know so like just dismiss their criticisms because they don't really know who you are but then it's like except praise from strangers so it's kind of like where is that balance of the two and kind of thinking about um both those things but i will tell you honestly that i've you know i've struggled with um, you know, some negative comments that I've got online, social media, that kind of thing. And I think, um, this is something that is a really good conversation to have because, uh, you could easily just not be on social media and not do anything. And then you'll never have to deal with that. Right. But also, um, then you limit yourself. But also the other thing that I think is really important for me is do I want to limit my kids? Right. Cause there's like a lot of parents I've talked to, they're like, Oh, I don't want my parents kids going on in these spaces and I don't want them dealing with this stuff and I always use these two examples and I didn't have this in my notes but this is why I want to kind of talk it through right so let's say your kid wants to be a YouTuber and I always talk about this with parents so your your kid wants to be a YouTuber right and let's say they're terrible they suck at it which could happen right they could suck at it they will get blasted on social media, they'll get blasted in the comments, YouTube. So we all know that it's going to happen, right? Whether it's warranted or not, that will happen. So let's go to the opposite. You know, let's say your kid is awesome at making videos, doing some really incredible content. Well, they're going to get blasted too, just from different people. And a lot of times that, that those negative criticisms come from jealousy, you know, from easily, hey, I'd rather tear people down than build stuff myself because that is a thing, right? And I know that if you're listening to this, you're probably not interested in that because you're listening here. It's the whole premise of Mindset Monday is to, is to you know, think about how we better ourselves, how we grow, right? And how we do this too. So it's something I always kind of talk about with parents. And um I, of course, I want to protect my kids, but I think protection is not about not ever giving them an opportunity to be in these spaces, right? It's actually helping them navigate and deal with this and connect with it. And, you know, so I've struggled with this too. So I will, I'm going to talk about some of the, the naysayers, right? I'm going to just kind of address that first. I remember, and I, I'm sure I've talked about this somewhere in a podcast. I've shared this a million times. I know that I share this in Innovate Inside the Box. Uh, Joe Sanfilippo, I was talking to him. I was really struggling with, um, having, um, you know, just some negative comments about something like stupid from people I don't even know and people that I don't necessarily know well enough to like look up to or anything like that. And he said that his wife gave him a really good piece of advice and he had shared it with me. He said, never take criticism from someone you wouldn't take advice from. And that just hit me right away. Cause I was doing that. And I, I often do that uh, as well. And so I think about the adverse of that too, right? Like, do we take praise from people that we don't know, don't have that connection with? And so that's why I want to kind of talk about both sides of this and really kind of how we can really get caught up in the negative comments of strangers um, and how we shouldn't do that. But then we're okay with getting caught up in the positive comments from strangers. And really, at the end of the day, it's figuring out and evaluating yourself. And I'll give you an example of this. Um, I was actually sharing with somebody. I had uh, spoke at a conference or spoken, speaking. I don't know. What do I say? What is, whatever. Put in the comments. 
but be nice about it, <laughs> right? Because it's you kind of miss the point of the podcast, right? So I was speaking, there it is, to a, a group uh, at a conference, and I actually got a standing ovation, and it was awesome. And I'll tell you, that's, there's a really great feeling about that, right? Because like for me, speaking is about an art. It's you know you you want to not just push people's thinking, but you want to bring them to motion. You want them to feel that they can go walk out of there and make a huge impact. And, you know, when you, when people are like lifted to emotion, there's something really powerful about that. And I'd shared that. And then I, then I was asked like, why do you seem so frustrated? I'm like, because there was things in that keynote that I wasn't happy with that. I, you know, my timing was off on this, this thing had went wrong. So I actually went back, looked at, you know, my slides kind of went over them and really kind of reevaluated what I was doing. And so I think, I think the thing that I'm struggling with and why I said I want to struggle with this is that do I appreciate that response? Absolutely. But I don't get caught up in it either, right? Because I think sometimes what happens is we see some of that success and then we don't push ourselves to grow. Whereas I'm like, hey, I really appreciate that. That, you know, made me feel awesome. But I, I, there's things I need to improve in this space too. And actually being able to identify that yourself and I know that seems like a a weird thing to say because um, a lot of times we are so caught up in pleasing other people that we forget about ourselves and kind of holding our own standards and you know being able to kind of evaluate that stuff and so like I always do I want to kind of talk about this uh, in a professional and personal aspect and uh, I'm going to talk about this in a professional capacity first Uh, a lot of times when I do workshops, keynotes, things like that, and I feel embarrassed saying this, but it's true. I will, uh, someone will say to me, hey, we, you know, got evaluations from, um, from, from the group and uh, we'd love to share them with you if you want to see them uh, just for your own reference. I'm like, no, I'm good. People are like, no, I see them. I'm like, no, I don't want to see them. And the reason I, I sometimes don't want to see them is because I get caught up so much in what other people say. And I think sometimes, like, I'm not saying those evaluation forms are uh, not necessarily useful, but sometimes someone's having an off day, they write a snarky comment, it's anonymous, blah, 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 and you get like 100 comments, you pay no attention to that, you get one negative comment, and then that's what you focus on, and you get stuck on this. And so I just don't necessarily pay attention to them. But that doesn't mean I don't accept criticism, and I don't actually you know, think about this, but I, I, I've kind of got to the space where I understand, like, I want to know where the criticism is coming from. And I want to know, is this a person who's elevating me, who's trying to help me grow through this process? Or is this someone who's just taking shots and just doing that too? So again, and the other thing too, is that let's say it was all positive comments, right? It was a hundred percent positive comments. Then, then it's just like, don't ever change. And well, no, that's, that's not how you grow. You, you have to be able to evaluate yourself, but I want to do, I do want to talk about, you know, I think criticism from the right place is actually really beneficial. And I'll give you this, this, um, this example, I was speaking at an event. This was very early in my career. And, uh, I was talking about how, um, educators, and this is like kind of the example I, I can kindly you know, vaguely remember this, I, I can paraphrase it for sure. I'd say like, everyone knows that teacher right at the beginning of their career. And, um, you know, they're excited, they want to try new things. But then we also know there's that teacher who's been there for like 30 plus years. And, and they don't want to ever change. And they think they, they, they know it all, they don't ever want to change. And so we want to be able to be in that space to embrace things, right. And so, uh, I've shared, I shared that 10, 15, 20 times, you know, in keynotes prior. And I got an email from someone after, and I actually still have it. I should have pulled it up, but I, I can remember something very specific in it. And the person's like, George, I, I, I loved your talk. Here are the things I loved about it. Here's, you know, this, 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 and this. Uh, I do take exception to something you said. And I was like, okay. And so... Uh, they shared it and you could tell us like you can tell from the email it was from a really good place and it was a veteran teacher and this teacher said you know I had been teaching I could tell you they're from Australia they've been teaching 40 plus years and the reason I remember this 
is because they said, you know, I remember your comment saying about a teacher that's, you know, in the career doesn't want to learn. And I felt that was kind of granny bashing. <laughs> it was like, oh, that sticks, that, that stuck out that term, granny bashing, right? And, and then they gave me some response. I said, like, I've been, you know, I'm, you know, I'm like 45, I think it was like 45 plus years in a profession. I'm continuously learning. I'm continuously growing. So I just want you to think about that as you're, as you're speaking. And I'll tell you, every single time I, I actually flipped that example and it, and I talked about it, said, you know, someone could be actually at the beginning of the career and they don't want to learn because they're just going to teach the way they're taught. Or someone could be, you know, 30 plus years in and some of the most innovative educators I've ever seen in my life, you know, could retire, but they're still willing to grow. And the opposite can be true. And it has nothing to do with age. It has everything to do with mindset, right? And, and that, that was what I meant to say. And, and I just, you know, it was so easy to kind of say like, hey, new teachers, good, old teachers, or experienced teachers, bad. And that was, and that's not what I wanted, because that was not the thing. And so every time I tell that story, every time I actually share an example of that, I always think of that feedback and how not only how it was delivered to me, um, cause I think it was, it was a way to elevate. So again, I don't want people thinking because I don't look at valuations it, it, that I don't, you know, open, I'm not open to criticism. It's how people connect and, and kind of understanding their intent. Cause I, I can, I can tell when someone gives me feedback out of jealousy versus elevation. And those are, those are kind of different things. And so the opposite is also true in, and thinking about that is you get the praise. And like I said, you can be so appreciative of it, but you have to learn how to actually, you know, just kind of value yourself. And now I'm going to jump to this personal side because I think the personal and the professional mesh for me quite a bit because I am not a trend jumper. And the reason I'm not a trend jumper is because my belief is the notion of like doing stuff that's true to you, doing stuff that you're passionate about. And we live in this beautiful time that when, if we are passionate about anything, there's an audience somewhere that wants to hear about it. You could be passionate about writing cursive and there's like probably a cursive group on Facebook that's all about that, right? Like stuff I've never even heard about. There's a group that's excited about that. And I feel that when you're true to yourself, people will find that. People love that authenticity and that connection. But when you're trying to just get applause, when you're trying to just um, just appease people, then you, then it's, you can see it's fake. And I'm, 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 I've seen that before too. And I think that's a, a big conversation in, you know, uh, education, the world, you know, is this kind of notion of brands, right? And I, I'm not a big fan of it because I'm, I'm who I am. And I just kind of want to share who I am, share my thinking. And I don't go a ton into like, just making everything perfect and having like the perfect filter on Instagram and all that other stuff, because I just want to share parts of my life. I want to share that. And hopefully, you know, people listening to this will inspire them to something. Maybe it will make them think something different. And if maybe people that are like, I don't want to listen to this, they go listen to someone else and that's okay. Right. But I think if you're so caught up in what other people say, then you become what they want you to become not who you are. And isn't that what we want for our kids? And like, when I talk about brands, I, this, uh, this, this quote from Adam Grant was shared for me. And I, I really appreciate what he said. So the time people spend building personal brands, we better invested in personal connections. Products have brands. People have relationships and reputations. Authentic, authenticity is not about marking yourself to create an image, it's about aligning your actions with your values. And that to me, was a really great tweet and, and I really appreciate that connection because uh, you know I get really frustrated when I know someone speaks about the importance of relationships but like also has like in their you know contract don't look me in the eye I need a green room keep me away from people and it's like all right like wh who like what are we doing here right and I, I think that for me 
because it's like you're not necessarily aligning with what you say. And I know boundaries are important. And I understand that aspect of it. Um, but yeah, I think those connections are really matter. So I, I guess, you know, ultimately, as I'm thinking about this stuff is don't don't necessarily get caught up in the negatives that of people that you don't know, right? I'm not saying don't take criticism and not, you know, be thoughtful of what you're doing. But also on the other side, don't get too caught up in the praise of others as well. Because then we start doing things that's not true to ourselves. And so I'm, I, I wrote this down and maybe this is kind of just maybe a way to frame or summarize it is that appreciate the kindness of strangers, but care more of what you think of yourself. That is the one person you will wake up with every day. And that's something I'm, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm working on, I, I'm working on myself and it's something that I like, I, I don't, get caught up in, I should share this because this is the trend or this is what's popular. I share what I love. And if I'm going to challenge you with something today. Think of the things that you love and, and, and share them with the world. And I, I feel that if we don't get too caught up in the criticism or the praise, you will find um, the people that are meant to connect with you and you can make a huge impact but at the end of the day, you have to learn to evaluate yourself. It's something I want to instill in myself. I want something to instill in my kids because once we get caught up in likes, you know, praise, criticisms, um, we tend to lose ourselves in that process. And so at the end of the day, appreciate, you know, the, the kind words of others, but make sure that you give them to yourself. Anyways, just some thoughts for you. I, I hope that, you know, kind of rambling and going through this, you might pick something up. But um, again, thank you for joining me for Mindset Monday. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for all you do. Take care.